If the car it pushes equally on both master cylinders, you should have the same pressure if you're using the same master cylinders. We used to always use a smaller cylinder to the rear because we wanted to put more pressure to the rear. However, we found out that with the two different master cylinders, we were creating a situation where we had a little bit of a spongy brake pedal. Now we've went to one inch on both sides. We've got a nice, hard, consistent pedal. And if your brake adjuster is working right and you have everything adjusted right, you can get as much rear brake as you need to. If you need more rear brake, you need to work on your race car. I mean, it, you know, if you're gonna rely on umpteen pounds of rear brake to turn the car, you're not gonna be fast in phase one and phase two anyway, because you shouldn't be on the brakes that hard to begin with once again. <clears throat> so important to maintain that balance bar and keeping it set so that it does everything that you want it to do. This is kind of what I just talked about with master cylinders, um, decreasing the size of the cylinder. Uh, you know, there's more pressure if you go with a smaller cylinder, but we found that it actually creates more of a spongier type brake so that the brakes don't have that solid feel that you would like them to be. Um, this is another maintenance deal, you know, we're set, we're racing dirt, we're on a dirt racetrack and we're racing in those conditions. Dirt will find its way through everything, guaranteed. So keep everything free of dirt, watch for moisture buildup. Um, you're going to find that there could be some, you know, when you, you run a lot of rear brake and you run your rear rotors really hot and they're glowing, so that there can be condensation because of the heat race, or the, the heat ranges. Um, keep the fluid clean and replace as necessary. Um, I highly recommend, to be honest with you, we change the, uh, we bleed the brakes every, every five, six nights. We bleed the brake. If you're a brake guy that uses a lot of brake, the brake system is not a circulatory system. It's a dead system, so you're just constantly pushing fluid into one area and then it's kind of coming back. So your rear caliper, it just has a cavity that has a minimal amount of oil in it, but it can't ever change. So if you're burning rotors up and you're running with your rotors cherry red, that oil is boiling and boiling and boiling. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start contaminating that oil so much that it's not gonna have the viscosity that you want for your brake system. So all you gotta do, and I just crack, bleed the brakes. If you do that on a regular basis, you're constantly changing the fluid anyway. So it's an advantage to, to keep clean fluid there. Anything else on brakes? I kind of gone through that fairly quickly. But. I mean, like uh, the only thing I like adjusting your brakes. You know, uh, if you brake bias in the car, um, I know some people don't do it. I know some people don't even put them in their cars. Um, I think if you have a race car, you have to have it in there. But uh, I'm like, for me, I always take mine, turn it to the rear, and then turn all the way to the rear, and then two back to the front, no matter what, under ca under caution. I don't know why, but every every caution, everything is all the way to the rear and two back to the front, just so I know exactly where I am at all times. You know I mean, like in some tracks, you're on the top one corner, the bottom and the next, you got to adjust down the straightaways. But it's always, I don't know, but just so I know what I get when I go down on that first corner every time. I mean, if you're starting, you know, on the front roll or whatever, or if you're in the lead, say you start out by yourself and you go down, you have too much front brake and, and uh, you push or something. You know I mean, you lose the race that way. But so I think I just adjust it back that way every time so I know what I have right away. And that's a common practice. Um, we've got a video of an in-car video of Dave Keene's car and, and I watched him on a restart in this video do the same exact thing. He put three turns to the rear from wherever he was at before they dropped a green flag for that restart. And what it does, it compensates for those front tires being cold and not gripping. So it puts a little bit more load on the rear wheels because when you go down in there, keep in mind, if you leave your brakes the same, but my tires are cool, 
you're going to skate the front end on it. I've seen that time and time again. This guy will have a straightaway lead. They have a restart, and he ends up fourth. And it's just because he didn't keep heating the tires, didn't adjust his brakes accordingly so that he could prepare for that first restart. Because, of course, the last thing you want is a push on a restart because it's going to be a problem. And brakes are just like everything else. They need to replace I mean, it ain't, it's nothing to go through four or five sets of brakes and rotors in a season. I mean, if, you, if you're racing a lot on your brakes hard, I mean, uh, it isn't worth taking a chance of uh, wrecking or a rotor blowing apart or something. You know, if a rotor blows apart, you're probably going to the fence. So, I mean, uh, keep an eye on all that stuff. Because the rear rotors crack. I mean, yeah. they, they wear down and they, they crack. And, I mean, I've had some buddies, ah, I'll get through tonight. And then you drive three laps later down in the corner and they're sitting in the fence. And then they need to come visit Bob for a stub. Dog food. Dog, Dog food. food. <laughs>